position coming in here. Are we expecting very early grace bans? Like, well, I guess not. That's going to be a Baron ban. Yeah, there's a Grace pick. So the interesting about the Grumpchaw ban is Mouse Sports has not shown to even take Grumpchaw when it's up. They actually ban it. They actually pick something else like Arden and ban Grumpchaw. So this is a very interesting ban by Dynasty here. I'm okay with the, the Grumpchaw ban for Dynasty because, like like we said, it then says, all right, Mouse Sports, you either have to ban away the Grace or ban away the Baron. And they're perfectly happy to take either of those two. With that Grace first pick, you, Dynasty has a very strong captain. And There's going to be a Vox pick by Mouse Force, it, most likely. I would here. assume it would be a Vox pick, yeah. Vox still available, and we've seen the power that can have it can have and into a Grace. Actually, to be fair, we really haven't seen we that haven't power. Seen we've Vox talked into about Grace, it. right? We, like, theoretically, it's amazing, but none of these teams are going for it. Mouse finally going to take up that advice. Yep, they're going to go ahead and ban Glaive here, most likely. Oh, Idris, why? Why Idris? So. Um, Glaive is a, a huge pick with Grace, so that's something that they can't allow to get through. So now I think Mouse Wars Excellent will probably pick ban. Lyra here. Excellent oh, Arden ban, too. Oh, Finn is actually decent into Grace. But, so they, just, but they just gave them... Batiste. The Batiste Glaive. Yeah, but Finn is good because Glaive, can't, Glaive and Batiste thrive at a weak front line. With Finn, you have a strong front line. If Glaive goes in and gets quibbled, Vox can just dance around him. And Grace won't be able to do much because Grace can get quibbled as well. There's a lot of CC that, that Finn can, can provide. Grace can't get quibbled if she's using her B. That's true. Only at level 8, though, she what, maxes yeah, it. Yeah, once you have it overdriven. Well, that's, oh. when, that's when Finn has a stun on his quibble, too. We'll so they to kind of counteract each other there. It'll actually be really fun to see I mean, how that interaction works. Just Man had a great game on Finn during game one. Once he got towards the end of the game, he really came into mm -hmm. his own, and it was specifically against Glaive yeah. as well. I think they're going to pick Samuel here. Uh, definitely Glaive was, 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 was obvious. I think Samuel might be the better pick here instead of Batiste. So let's see if they're going to go with that, because Samuel and HF guy are just so strong. He can just constantly hit the front line, and then Glaive can dive in when someone is low. I actually, I almost feel like Batiste is really strong into Finn, even though Finn can't be stunned or feared. If you get a Fearsome Shade out and it hits the entire team, not only are you now fearing the entire team, but you're also splitting them up because the Finn is not going to move from the fear while the rest of the team is being forced away. So that's another kind of really cool interaction that could come out. I would love to see the Batiste, and I love Batiste into Vox as well. We'll have to see what the option is going to be 12 seconds for Dynasty But if they give over decide. Samuel with Finn, that's a very strong um, combination there. Samuel Finn is actually extremely strong because of the pull. So yeah, they're going to take the Samuel, and then most likely this will be either a Kestro or a CP Black Feather. Based on recent results, I think they're mailing towards more of the CP Kestrel, but they can also pick the Black Feather here because of Grace's nice engage yeah. there. Like she can get onto Kestrel really easily. And we've seen that Black Feather is definitely like quite a comfortable pick for Ander Doom. It's one that he's happy to to pick up into most compositions. He's quite happy to just go with that as a as a default pick, if you will. So we'll have to see. I would expect I, I would not be surprised at all to see Black Feather. Uh, pick up. I don't necessarily think they have to go for. There but we go. Go for the show gets picked. Okay. All right. That is a well. risky pickup. We have a bit of a treat on our hands, gentlemen. This is going to be an interesting game. The grace coming through for Dynasty. How are we feeling about these compositions? Obviously, Dynasty very aggressive in terms of picks with a grace and a clave. <laughs> If they can be aggressive early, they might be able to get ahead. They can be aggressive early and they can get past the Finn. Obviously, you know, Finn's going to try and be this big tanky front line blocking the damage coming out of the Samuel, but both Grace and Glaive can just go right past him. They have very long ranges with their engage. If they can get onto that Kestrel, they should be able to win this game. How are you feeling about the mouse composition though, Sweet Chang? Yeah, Mouse, if they long, they get good traps. They bait the Glaive afterburn in there. They get, they get a trap stun and then a quibble. If it gets double stun, Glaive is literally dead meat. So I think Mouse Ports can win this game. It's gonna be, it's actually pretty even with the draft, mm -hmm. but I think okay. Mouse Ports going to take this match. All right, well, we'll have to see if that is going to be the case. Hashtag Vainglorier is how you can let us know who you want to win the European final this week. It's Dynasty up against Mouse Sports. We'll see if we can have another sick three-game series as we pass it over to our casters. Thank you very much, and this is been a fantastic day of Europe, AJ. Probably surpassed many people's expectations as to the level of gameplay that we were going to receive and the level of competition from all the teams in their semi-finals. Now hoping that this big matchup between Dynasty and Mouse lives up to the rest of this evening. Yeah, you know, today has been a very interesting day of games. Obviously, yesterday was our first day on 2.6 and we weren't sure what to expect. I felt like we'd kind of 
seen what we uh, what we were going to see in terms of innovation and, and new strategies, etc. Yesterday, but today has really been you know some interesting new developments as well as a, a great deal of refinement on what we saw yesterday. And at the very least, I mean, Europe is looking kind of like a different animal than in the past. Like they are much more aggressive. We're seeing a lot of fighting in the jungle early. Some of that they're not executing on that well. Some of it's a little bit too deep, too much. But some of it's working out really nicely. Now this time we got Dynasty trying to invade here. Two versus three is a bit dicey. Holy! What? Almost, almost gets the steal. Doesn't quite land it. But that's just, just that is just the power of grace. Especially when you pop your boots early. You take boots level one so that you can actually make plays like that. PC Lamb, Mowgli, looking like they're going to get this Elder Tree and Dynasty getting a lot of early game pressure. Yeah, and that's one of the things which we're starting to see really comes with a Grace pick. Uh, also, of course, Glaive, great pairing there to actually go aggressive early on. PT Lamb does need to start getting some farm up in the lane, though. Apful doing a good job of getting uh, getting underway here, starting to find some gold. And, you know, the Vox is one of his strongest picks. We will have to see if maybe that ban on Vox was a necessity coming in from Reliable Union earlier on, or if Dynasty can manage to find the win regardless. Yeah, no, that's the thing, is that it was banned all three series against Apple, so obviously Reliable Union, recognizing that Apple's Vox is terrorizing. We'll have to see if Dynasty uh, will feel the same later on into this series. Now I'm going to pop back now. It's a big difference in farm so far between PT Lamb and um, Apple, especially considering Apple is going to make it back to the lane first. So we can look to try and push some of these lower health C, uh, CS into the turret, try and deny even more. But um, it's a very interesting start to the game, considering the early aggression that came out of Dynasty. We haven't seen anything since then. We have not, but I think we're going to soon. Right now, I like what they're doing. They're just saying we can easily, basically every time, get the middle middle uh, trant, right? Like, there's not a, a good option for oh. a return play. No, I was about to about to think about handing it off there. But, you know, it, it's, it's hard for them to contest that uh, with this spin, for example. Like, not, not the strongest early game hero. Uh, and they're, as a result, spending a lot more time up in the lane just making sure Apple gets healthy. Um, I think once maybe, you know, uh, an item is finished here, Dynasty's going to flick a switch. You know, they're going to start really pressuring the jungle. Um, that's when I think Mowgli and, and Rikameza are going to have the option to go very aggressive. we got to remember as well, Rikameza, he's been playing super good on the Samuel. Uh, so I like the fact that they've got that with the Grace. This is the kind of pairing in the jungle that I think Dynasty can abuse. Yeah, I, I think that there's definitely a lot of strength available to Dynasty, but something to keep in mind is the fact that Apple is playing this Vox, and Vox very good at dodging aggression and at least positioning himself better. You know, oh, the afterburns. Oh, the Doom stole that. Nice. Yeah, that's really huge for the team at Mouse. Uh, you know, Apple on this Vox, he can use that uh, Sonic Zoom to position on the other side of an afterburn, which means he gets knocked away from his enemies rather than towards his enemies. Not only that, he can avoid Grace's engages. It's going to be kind of the frost burn, I think, from um, the Samuel, from Rukumeza, that's going to have to really hit onto Apple so they can really land some um, superior engage um, engages onto Apple. That's definitely the case when it comes to team fights. But what I'm expecting, honestly, is for Rikumeza, as I said, once his first item is completed, to start trying to pressure on the Doom in the jungle. I think maybe you don't find kills, but it's it's not that hard to force him back when you're pairing your grace with Samuel. Which, like Finn Kestrel is not going to be be comparable in a, in a lot of situations. The thing that you've got to be careful about is active camos, obviously. But you know, I think Dynasty they've got their head screwed on straight. They should be able to play around those for the most part. We've got a fountain now. Maybe they'll want to skirmish with it, but. It's a bit bold uh, going for a full-on skirmisher team fight this early. Yeah, no, well, they are going to move into the lane because Apple is by themselves. And so if they can catch Apple by himself, then it makes a lot of sense to look for as much engagement as possible. Really intrigued to see what Apple's build will be uh, on this patch. There's been so many great and very intriguing uh, Vox builds, but with the current components, it's seemingly likely to be a Sora Blade coming through as his first item. Mowgli, looking for a bit of a re-engage, but look at those Madison Verdicts doing the work for the side of Dynasty as they make their escape. Bit of damage on Trigameza. There is a one shot. It's going to connect. Oh, that is a beautiful first blood coming out of Doom. Oh, man, the camel going right through the thread there, right? Now, some very, <laughs> very strong stuff coming out of I'm the Doom. Uh, you know, I, I feel like maybe Dynasty was like, 
All right, Mowgli, you get this. And PT, uh, and Mowgli was like, all right, PT Lamb, you get this. Good oh. luck for the team. Didn't pan well, out. He's going to take one for the team right now as he takes Kalima shots. Oh my goodness. The fountain ticking away. Able to survive. Those Kalima shots are just edging towards Mowgli, but not quite connecting. Rickman's going to take a bit of baiting. There's a scout trap. Oh, it's not a scout trap. It's an active camo trap. And that's going to be another kill on to Rickamesa. Doom set that one up ages ago. There was no way they would knew it was there. They've got a one shot coming up in just a couple of seconds. Six, in fact, and Mowgli is so low. This turret is going to take a huge beating. If they turn onto one target, they can look to try and blow them up. It's just a shame that Mouse don't really have the energy to fire that one shot off. So I'm the Doom is pretty warmed up on the Kestrel. Uh, I, I do think one thing I would contest as, as sort of a plan from Dynasty is fighting at a choke point. Uh, you got Quibbles. You got splash damage from Apple. You got glimmer shots and active camos. It's not where you want to be fighting. Um, I, I think that was not worth trying. Then later on, when you saw the, you know the damage coming out of the turret and the fight in lane, that was just a simple matter of you know overstaying and getting crushed by the fact that I'm the Doom at that point could set up very freely by having initiative in the lane, you know, being in a forward position and, and having the opportunity to set up ahead of time. Dynasty, they're they're starting to fall behind a little bit. But they do scale nicely just by virtue of the fact that Samuel's great in the late game. Grace is one of the best heroes at keeping him in the fight. Now, Apple, though, starting to get scary already. Yeah, so is Doom as well. This is going to be very interesting how this fight pans out as Mowgli takes so much damage in the process. Holding on to his fountain, he is very close to level 6 as well. He may even use that on himself to try and heal back up to there full. There it is. Yep, it is. going for it. Yeah. I think that's fairly smart, but now they gotta they gotta really pay attention to Justman here. If Justman hits six in the middle of a, an exchange, they might just go for it. Well, he's very close. The Blibbing goes out, blocked up by Justman. Here comes Under Doom, showing so much damage out. One shot is currently available. Could look for it onto a Rikameza or onto Mowgli even. Not bad targets neither of them. There's the pool, but oh, it just goes right through the center. Goal scored, but here comes the wave for an apple charging forward. Oh. Fountain used. They're trying to turn around. I'm the Dooms in the middle of it all, throwing these glimmer shots out, but the minion wave is just pulling in towards it. The one shot this time doesn't quite find the back high side of Rikameza, and everyone's going to return to their positions. Apple's a monster on this box, dude. I can see why Reliable Union was banning it away. He was able to play in and out, in and out of these fights very smartly around things like Mowgli's crowd control, around what PT Lamb has to offer. Grace does struggle at landing the big crowd control onto someone like a Vox. I think the key thing later on is going to be trying to land the Holy Nova onto the Kestrel. The focus for the Vox is just going to be getting a directional shield down so that no matter what, he's just basically doing reduced damage. Um, that's, that's pretty much how that one works. I'm the Doom. I'd like to see him start to pressure a little bit more here as well. If he can find some good shots on someone like Piki Lamb or Rikameza, it'll be a, a nice opportunity for Mouse to dive in. Apple can probably train through someone. Things are, are definitely moving Mouse's way in terms of the way that the map is developing too. They're forcing reactions out of Dynasty, and whenever you have that kind of uh, ability to make your opponents do the moves you want, it lets you really play your game. Just Man's got forced to court up again. Maybe they'll look for it. Yep, he is hidden. He's gonna pull Rickmezza in, but a great reaction from Mowgli. He stops that from being disastrous for the side of Dynasty. And the Doom level nine. A lot of damage. It's gonna be after Ben knocking him sideways, but he is okay with that. Wait for it goes out, but not really much coming out of Mouse. More used as a defensive tool rather than to go on the offensive. This turret will go down though, and that's going to be even more gold going over to the other side of Mouse. I'm really curious to see what direction I'm the Doom takes this in for his third item. He's on nine, 900 gold, so, sorry, Apple. So we might see uh, next time he shops what direction he's thinking about. Attention bow doesn't seem like a terrible plan, but I'm not sure it's as good as breaking point considering how Grace can make these fights go a little bit longer. Um, it really depends on his, his preference here, I think, to a certain extent. And also, you know, whether or not he's trying to just sync up with I'm the Doom and blow someone up, or if yeah. he's trying to really utilize the fact that he is a Finn and play that longer fight uh, on, on his terms, you know? Th this is interesting, actually, because there is a big decision to be made here. Um, it will dictate a lot of how the fights develop later on. I'm the Doom probably, I would expect, 
just going to continue going towards burst damage and really set up for Apple to hunt someone down afterwards. And uh, I think similarly, you know, itemization on the side of Dynasty, fairly self-explanatory. But the, uh, the Apple uh, build really does determine a bunch of things here. I think it's going to be an Aegis completed, and then he will go towards his uh, third damage item. The good thing about Vox is on a Sorrow Blade Poison Ship, he actually does a lot of damage. Um, the attack speed increase um, from the Poison Ship means that he can kind of really output a lot. He has the sustain as well to try and survive PT Lamb. And he's, he's relying on Doom to, to land a lot of damage as well. So that's there as well. Got that forced cord being blocked up once more. Quick fingers from Mowgli this time on the Crucible. Something that we wondered a little bit about uh, in the series against SK. Some Crucibles potentially could have been used and would have been pretty good for Dynasty, um, but unfortunately weren't. Good to see that the Forced Accords are not really getting any, any value so far. You know, I don't feel like they have to do this, but I'd almost like to see Mouse kind of push the, the advantage that they have by trying to bait in the members uh, on the side of Dynasty. You could, for example, set up a scout trap, not sorry, not a scout trap, an active camo. Uh, in, <laughs> it's not just me! <laughs> in a location and then sort of intentionally like go for an obvious force accord. Right. It's a bit too far out of position. Um, sort of encourage Dynasty to jump on your fin and then go for the turnaround. Because the thing is, Crucible is always going to get used on Forced Accord, like pretty much 100% of the time. Uh, as a result, you know your active camo is going to connect. So they, they have ways of forcing Dynasty, as we've mentioned before, into bad positions. Here we go. Fight breaking out. A lot of damage being put down. The Silence going to hit on to Rikameza. One shot, though, won't quite find a target. A Crucible used early, they would expect that Forced Accord to come in. That's a really big opportunity now. Do we have Reflex Box? Only on Rikameza. They can pull people in and it's going to be PG Lamb. He dives straight towards I Am The Doom. I Am The oh, Doom just damage. about escapes. Oblivion goes down, but look at the damage onto PG Lamb. He is just disgustingly low and will fall. Can Apple dodge these Malice and Verdicts? He is going to get locked up by the Grace, but he just does uh, away. And look at the damage. Oh, Just Man just standing in front being a bully. This is beautiful stuff. An ace comes through from Mouse and fantastic positioning from both Apple and just Man to make sure that they could take the end of the fight. That polite company from Just Man won them the fight. A hunt like that, that was unreal. It actually pulled Grace out of range of knocking up Apple when Apple did not have a way out of the Holy Nova. That's why they won 100%. Because if that Holy Nova connects, Apple goes down immediately thereafter. Riku Meza, he's going to be able to do it. Pizza, oh, what are you wow. doing, man? Try to make a point here. But no, like, so seriously, that, that polite company was out of this world. So I don't, I haven't played Grace. I'm, I'm not a Captain main, and I'm not going to play in the jungle. So I, I don't quite know the um, order you level up your your abilities. But from what I was kind of gathering from the desk, you, you actually go for Holy Nova as your first overdrive. Uh, Currently, Mowgli has nah. gone towards his A benediction. Um, so Bacon I'm, I'm, was talking gonna... about Holy Nova. I don't think that is the typical build path, to be honest. Okay. Um, Benediction's overdrive no, I think you're gives right. you cooldown reduction every time you land your perk, yep. which at the very least is every time you Benediction because it automatically applies. But realistically, especially against a target like Finn, you're going to be getting so much cooldown reduction from overdriving A. And then a lot of graces just go for three ranks in her ultimate, and I can see why. The heal yep. is honestly more valuable than having CC in vulnerability, especially against this team. Like, the only person who's really going to mess you up uh, a lot of the time is going to be the, the Finn with the Quibble, and I think you're fine with him quibbling you versus quibbling one of your other guys. Oh, oh, look at that! That Quibble! The damage onto Mowgli! Ooh. He has to use his ultimate on himself. Wow. I, I'm, I'm doing some research whilst you uh, you make your point, AJ, and I think you are completely correct from every pro I've seen. Yeah, so I, I don't know anyone solid who here. actually overdrives B. Um, I think yeah. it's, it's a fine overdrive in the right situation. That situation sure. being, you know, you're playing against, like, a Batiste a Finn and, I don't know, a Catherine <laughs> a Glaive, or something, why not? right? Like, th there are some situations where you want it, but it, it's certainly not the frequent uh, pickup, especially because, I mean, you're going to buy a Crucible anyway. Uh, you're going to be able to deal with many of, of the things Ooh. that can be offered here. Dynasty won the fight here. Apple, Ooh. he's going to struggle to escape the clutches of PT Lamb. Maybe not. PT Lamb goes right down. They're going to pull everyone back into the fight. Rick Meza just on this hero. He's about to escape. Seems likely the one shot will 
not quite connect. Wow, PT Lamb and Rikameza seemingly looked like they were going to die there, but it turned out it was just going to be Mowgli. Now a Kraken being started up with a uh, app full on this box. They can take it very quickly, and actually Doom, with the cooldown reduction on the clockwork, is going to provide a lot of damage with Glimmer Shots. If he sets up the active camera traps right, well, it doesn't even matter. Okay, so uh, we're seeing the Apple actually did go for the breaking point as we expected. I think that's super smart. At yep. this point, the only way, honestly, the only way that uh, the side of Dynasty wins the fight is if Peachy Lamb blows up Apple. And it's just, he's he's not able to do it in a lot of these fights. The, the protection from Just Man is too good. Polite Company, even if you have Just Man separated from Apple by a decent margin, is not going to work. Peachy Lamb, though. Oh, whoa! Peachy oh, Lamb! Out. He gets out, but the one shot's going to come through, surely. It's going to go close, but it doesn't connect. That's going to be Mowgli trapped, and Rikamez is forced to port back to base. He can't defend this turret. It's a free turret. The Kraken's not even here. I don't think anyone get damaged by the explosion. This is a full HP Kraken marching into the base, and this could just be it. I, I think, honestly, it, it probably will be here. Apful does have a little bit of health down already, but he has so much damage, he can just turn this fight. Oh. The stuns onto Mowgli, just preventing him from doing any damage. The one shot onto PT Lamb. They've used the heal to heal up Mowgli. First turret goes down, Apful playing with fire, but he gets the heal from the fountain. And now they're just going to try and finish the game right here, right now. PT Lamb knocks Doom away, but he somehow goes in this. Okay, he's down, but Apful, he is just uncontested. And that is going to be game one of this series going over to Mouse. Very strong performance from them. Dynasty did not find the openings they were looking for for a large portion of the game. And I think we've seen, you know, maybe Reliable Union were on the right track with that box ban. Looking towards draft number two, Dowsy, I'm, I'm almost expecting to see it. it. It's just so good on, on Apple. Another question. No uh, contraption, or at least too late, too little. Um, uh